thank you for coming today. Um, it's one wanted flash. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought I'd begin by just talking a little bit about um, how Delphi and I met and how Delphi kind of came to Maid and we started showing Delphi's work, um, which was throughout Delphi's um, time studying at Cardiff Met with Fine Art. Yeah, this was the first gallery that ever showed my work outside of art school, so that's really nice for me. Yeah, so we'd have like one or two pieces in our open exhibitions and it was clear that Delphi had something that to say and something that was unique and different to a lot of the work that, you know, 2D work. Um, and yeah, so I was kind of interested in Delphi from the get go. And then MADE develops relationships with emerging artists and we run a number of mentoring programmes. But one one of the key, you know, from when people graduate, but one then that progresses to the idea of an open summer exhibition when people have sort of been out of college for a while. And that's an open call to pro professional level artists at any stage. And um, that's every other year. And the summer open exhibition, we bring together a panel of other curators from other gallery spaces from the museum, and we pick a winner. And that the idea of that is really to use that as a mechanism to provide a solo exhibition the following year, and from which we can lever funding to enable that to happen, both for the artist and for the gallery to support that artist. So last summer, Delphi, I'm delighted. <laughs> it was top of my list that we all agreed unanimously that Delphi should be the recipient of the um, Made Summer Art Prize. And so I had the pleasure of being able to work with Delphi and we were able to get gain funding through the application process, which was the first time for you oh, putting yeah. in an Arts Council application. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a learning experience in itself, it isn't it? Was. It took us a few months to kind of get through that. And I mean, you helped me very much through kind of guiding what they need to see from the application and yeah, what it means to be someone who's successfully acquired funding and how that kind of leaves you in the Arts Council's like bubble, I guess. Yeah. I mean, and this was following Delphi's MA at the Ruskin. And you've been out for how long when, when um, you ended that our prize? About nine months, I think. Yeah. A year to nine months, I think it must have been. Yeah. But this is the first kind of biggest display of yeah, your work and the most ambitious to date. Um, and it was clear that Delphi had a vision um, for the work and the exhibition in terms of this piece here particularly, I'd say was there from the beginning, wasn't it? Yeah, that was this nest, this cave was something that I had conceptualised really early on and something that I was really excited about specifically to be in this space. Um, I know it's something we discussed early on was that there was a possibility of doing a show in another space, but I really, really wanted it to be here and um you know because I've been in the gallery so many times I was really familiar with it and I, I knew <laughs> I knew that I could do this um yeah that was kind of yeah so how did you start planning it I had this idea that I wanted to make an immersive soft cave um and over the course of the last kind of nine months or so I was thinking about how like literally what what shape does that take and everything in the show is kind of concerned with the body and I knew that this had to be rooted in in this idea of literally just flesh growing like out of the gallery um and so I was trying to think about how you know, if, if like a, a body overtook this space, how would it begin to kind of encroach in the space? And um, I came up with this idea of these like separate panels um, that could all connect together and, and form a big like hyper mass lump. Um, 
And yeah, so the idea is that each panel is representative of one facet of my being. Some of them are very figurative and very literal. Uh, others kind of swoop more to the abstract side of things. Um, would, you, would you take us through the elements of body? Yeah. Um, okay, we'll start here, I guess. So something, a shape that occurs a lot in this particular installation are the villi, which are these like tiny little kind of sausage shapes that line the surface of your stomach. Um, so they first appear on that kind of corner with these tiny little velvety like fingers. Um, and as you move around, we have a giant soft padded bone that reflects my um, bone softening condition. <laughs> and all of these layers of red knitted textiles that kind of were woven and stitched together to replicate the fibrous nature of muscle tissue. Um, and then going round, we have my fingerprint <laughs> from this finger and the red bean panel, um, which is kind of my ode to my partner who loves a beanie and wore a red beanie like pretty much constantly when we first met um, and I kind of just <laughs> have a soft spot for them and then um, my best friend had knitted these brown hats and very casually they were like I don't know I don't know if you can use these and I was like I have a plan for these I know exactly where they're going um, and they also have that kind of billy fingery kind of structure to them um so binding them together to create a little blob and they live here next to the pink furry blob um which touches on a few things but mostly my hair um which has been I've been dyeing my hair pink since I was 13. um I've been wearing pink wigs for performance work um pretty much since I started my undergrad and so they also found a home here. Mm. Um, what else? We have a chocolate cyst, which is a type of development that can happen in, in endometriosis. And it's called a chocolate cyst because it, it looks like it has chocolate inside. It's very appetizing. <laughs> um, we have an eczema inspired lighting panel that shows how um, how the cells appear when you're looking through a microscope. So a lot of the patterns that are particularly within this space, they come from collections of micrographs, which are pictures taken through microscopes. Um, and they show the, the cellular structure and the cellular differences of various conditions that I have. Um, so that was one of the eczema and this disco panel also comes from micrograph patterns. Um, <laughs> this is mimicking the internal structure that you have in the human stomach. It's on a much different scale. So the villi are like microscopic and they coat this basically um and then this kind of mimics the the shapes and forms that you get in in the human stomach we have a big old large intestine growing up the wall and we have more villi more socks and you know shapes and wobbles poking out there are a couple of pieces like this one and that one that are kind of sliced open to show the different layers of the epidermis. So all the different layers of skin that you have as you go through it, they have different cellular structures. Um, and so the patterns on the fabric reflect the types of structures that you see on the micrographs and the various different um, ways that they act as you go deeper or higher through the body. Um, and in that back corner, we have 
a big old lung covered in droopy, saggy aioli and a nice soft rib cage. And I think those are most of the things that are kind of overtly, specifically um, a body part. Mm. Everything else is kind of bodily, but not so um, figurative. This is my spotlight. Um, I knew that I wanted to make a kind of stalactite um, blob that would, would glow and be all inflamed and angry and so she's my, my spot. Quite funny because um, Delphi had a pop-up studio space about on Bravel Street and Maiden Rose space and we had sort of monthly meetups, didn't we, to yeah. talk about the work and they come in and <laughs> there'd be a new panel and uh, it was just so brilliant sort of talking to you because and how it how you how it represented each you know the muscles I really love the muscles and the just the, the, the detail in the work but one coming in and you doing that one was it was balloon was it balloons yeah I made the kind of original mold for it out of balloons and sellotape um the sellotape was mostly kind of just to like secure the shape and make sure that the balloons weren't coming in direct contact with the latex because latex sticks to latex so I would have ended up with a blue spot. Latex is very apt isn't it because it has all those connotations with medical yeah you know interventions and gloves going on and it's kind of surgical. All surgical whereas most of the fabrics and uh, have all been gathered and reused materials yeah. Apart from the latex and, yeah. Almost everything in here, including the light fixtures, actually was second hand. Um, like sustainability has been a big part of my practice since I was an undergrad. I think mostly just due to the fact that that's the world we live in. Like We all need to be um, conscious of that. And particularly as someone who is working with textiles, like... The textile industry has so much weight um, that I mean, it's kind of it's the most sensible, most practical choice, but it's also like a lot more affordable. Um, and because of that, the fabrics tend to the, the materials that I acquire lead the development of the work rather than the other way around. Um, so kind of everything I make is contingent on the environment around me and that feeds into the way that the work manifests in like a very literal sense. Mm. But the, if we talk about the floor, I mean, mm. the floor is... Yeah. So the floor is a mixture of tufting and braiding and um, needle loop looping. Um, and again, all of the patterns are based on different micros micrographs. Um, so I have various ones covering pernicious anemia, which is an autoimmune disorder, and osteomalacia, which is the kind of soft bones. Um, and we also looked at endometriosis. And yeah, all of the conditions I have where there are specific physiological like actual differences in the, in the way that my body has grown and developed. Mm. I was looking at the micrographs of that. Um, and I kind of just created this collage of sticking everything together and, you know, like stitching up the different bits of myself. And mm -hmm. yeah, that got transposed into the carpet. Mm. In a, yeah. And if you look on Delphi's Instagram, she's got, um some some of the images of the micrographs yeah. and um i mean i assumed it was going to be pink and red and fleshy um in terms of the context of the work but then when i looked at the micrographs they are actually it was it was really strange to see how how kind of an accurate representation it was of this yeah. um the colors the shapes everything um i think uh particularly the pink. endometriosis because it is like very 
red and pink, bless you, bless you tissue. Um, yeah. And it has all of these beautiful colours and that's part of why I was so inspired by them when I found them. Um, all of the ones that I looked at came from the ISM science journal, so they're all publicly accessible. Um, and yeah, they come, I don't know if some of them are dyed with like specific things in order for that visibility to be there. Um, but yeah, some of them are just naturally pink and, and the colours and there's such a kind of clear blockiness to them. And mm -hmm. something that I find really interesting about the micrographs is like, removed from that scientific context, they just appear to be abstract shapes and forms. Um, and I find that like almost tension really interesting that as you get closer and closer into the body the less figurative it feels at least to me as someone who isn't like science I'm not a scientist I'm not really kind of educated on that side of things um and I find that like balance and that that kind of losing of a very specific shape and a losing of, of what we consider to be a bodily shape is really interesting for me. Yeah, because there's sort of, there's a fluidity in it, but very clear sort of lines and shapes and forms in the micrographs as well as in yeah. the work. But this making of the floor was the final sort of element, really. It was, I mean, Delphi had made the panels and then when we brought them into the space for the install, Delphi was in the space for two weeks um, putting it together. And then Delphi started with that corner padding. There's an electricity sort of hard box under there. And it, she started softening it literally before my eyes and the adding elements. And it kind of grew out of the, it sort of yeah. mapped it out with the pink paint. And then, yeah. I had a kind of rough plan of, you know, approximately like what size each of the panels is and where they might, where they might go um, in terms of, balance and also kind of like building a body that makes sense to kind of move through um and yeah so everything kind of grew out from from that corner it, it, it's, it was a real team effort the floor um there six were a few people six helping people, me yeah. um just like a team of people hand sewing um panels together and particularly the flooring um it was quite the change there. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, we've got, I mean, the response has been incredible. So we've got the sound piece as well. We've got the heartbeat. Um, and it's quite interesting seeing the different as people come into the space. There's a sort of general overwhelm. I mean, it. we wanted the front to be, you know, like a sort of boom piece um, and and these so these flayed they, I see them almost like flayed skins yeah. but um that was that was an element to the, to the work that I you know came in during the process of making yeah. this piece really wasn't it it wasn't something predicted but yeah very much I mean again because I'm working with secondhand materials it, it's what I find that that develops the work and when I was producing the panels for the installation um, and kind of ruminating on like various chronicalnesses and what that looks like for my body. Something that I was thinking about a lot is tethering. Um, and that can occur in endometriosis. And for me, effectively what has happened is that endometriosis has tethered my internal organs together. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of being pulled into places they shouldn't be by scar tissue and all of that lovely, lovely stuff. Um, and I was just really interested in that literal idea of like tension and kind of pulling and mushing. And um, I knew that I wanted to have kind of like tethered corners and bits of the installation that were you know, being kind of pulled to mm. itself. And that idea just, mm. just kept going. And when I found like the first crochet blanket in Charity shop. I thought, oh, I think I could. I think I could use this to mm. to show that that kind of effect. And like, mm. I just really enjoyed making it. Um, mm. Yeah. And then there's the series of drawings 
which are quite intimate, aren't they? And sort of feel that very private moment, you know, this is the sort of pop up inside out, inside out but yeah. the drawings feel much more yeah sort of private somehow would I you think say? in a sense because I don't know this is my body and it feels very personal and very intimate when people are in the space and interacting with it but it's kind of almost removed from who I am as a person like my face isn't in it I'm not always <laughs> in it um and like I guess there is always that kind of sense of vulnerability when it's you and, and your face and your body and it's like you nude. There's there's there is a level of exposure and um, yeah, kind of mm. intimacy with the audience. Mm. But I think something that reoccurs in my practice a lot is is this a hope or desire that the work in some way kind of enables people to understand what it's like to, to be me or just a little piece of what it's like to live in a body that's like mine um, and yeah tracking that means drawing pictures of me working in the studio pictures of me shampooing my hair while I'm sat around in the bath and um, kind of everything that's in the show logs my life while I was making it mm. um yeah it connects the work and then in this room here is what I found interesting was the arrival of the more domestic objects then being part of that yeah. in expression out from inside out and Delphi found a lamp on the street it's in the front window which had cracked and yeah. that was the start of a whole new part of the work wasn't it just on my way to the studio in Bravel Street and there was this lamp on the pavement outside someone's house and it had this like hole in it and this perfectly shaped bit of ceramic that had come out of the hole and I thought well we'll pick it up and see if it works and it did so um it came back to the studio with me and I, I was just staring at this hole for ages and I couldn't get this idea of um you know, a lump kind of escaping from that hole out of my head. So I made the lump and, and stuffed it in there. And because I've been thinking about this idea of unwanted flesh, like literally just lumps and bumps and stuff that grows, but we don't want it to. Um, so I gave the lump some, some lumps and I was thinking, you know, if a lamp <laughs> had cancer, what would its tumours look like? So I gave it all of these like trim and kind of beading like tumours and like glitzy stuff and it's, yeah, it's just a, a big glittery <laughs> lumpy mess. Um, and the lamp sparked that interest in working with other domestic items. So we found the chair and this chair had all of this damage, particularly on the arms, all of these holes and the fabric was just like literally strings and the padding was coming out everywhere. And I thought that would be the kind of perfect place to, to emphasize this idea of growth and damage in a slightly different way. Um, so I reupholstered her and here she is. <laughs> and the, I mean, for me, the, the glittery bejazzling is it's about you taking it into a certain language that is yeah. joyful and friendly that even disease it's a kind of process of making friends with disease isn't it would you say Absolutely. yeah i think something i struggle with a lot is that there is like a very um hegemonic portrayal of disability and sickness um People tend to have this perception that, like, A, all disability is somehow the same, or and B, that it's, like, innately tragic. And um, it's definitely challenging, but I find the biggest challenge is, is not that I'm disabled, it's that the world is, is so ableist. Um, and part of, part of my work is challenging the idea that it, it has to be like innately sad or tragic. And actually my experience of disability and being chronically ill has been like so much more complex than that. 
like it has been immeasurably deeper than that I have found so much love and companionship and support and like literally in, in an entire different way of living and for me those are really wonderful like amazing side effects that wouldn't have happened if I wasn't disabled and showing the beautiful ornate and like wonderful side of, of that is really important to me and yeah and the responses again to the work have really we've had conversations about bodies where people have opened up about you know quite a matter of fact oh yeah I've got endometriosis oh yeah my girlfriend's got blood. you know and and we've been able to have conversations with you know in art an art space about health in a way we've had doctors in children running and going can I have my bedroom like this and then you know uh, you know there's been such a huge response to it um and being able to talk about that like that's not you know, most people sort of hide it away. And I think what you've done is so generous in an enabling these conversations and in developing the a program of engaging of engagement alongside it. It's been really fun. Like we've had rag rugging circles and they came in one day and there were five or six women or a you in the middle just talking, talking about but their bodies, you know. And then we've developed a live art program and we've got Charlie here today really glad to have Charlie Charlie here who um performed last night and devised a piece of work and we can talk about that in a minute if you like but that was kind of extraordinary to see Charlie's interpretation from the walls inwards outwards and how that's made me see the work again yeah um yeah but how do you how do you how do you see you know in terms of the allying with queer culture for instance where's the parallel in this there's in something kind of uh innately camp about what i do it, because it is about exaggeration it's about hot pinks and glitter and um you know it <sighs> my work dissects what it's like to live in an othered body what it is to to live in a marginalized body and for me that encompasses my queer identity um and uh if you didn't know there's actually a huge overlap between the queer community and the disabled community um and there's lots of thoughts as to why that might be uh, which one precludes the other um but there is a, a huge overlap in the community and somehow still um a real lack of access in queer spaces and particularly queer nightlife and um i think making a space that is undeniably a bit gay is really important to me um and yeah like with everything it's my queerness is a, a part of who I am and it becomes a part of the work and the kind of giant pink fur blob doesn't happen out of um, a conventional space. And yeah, I think anything that, well, for me, this examines that state of, of being othered and alien. Um, it touches on a lot of different experiences yeah. yeah, and your journey. Very much that. You know, I started. We've talked a lot about. Yeah, the menopause. Yeah. So we're both menopausal. <laughs> which is, which is, <laughs> which is <laughs> I'm, I'm fifty four, and you're twenty six. I turned twenty six last year. <laughs> this oh. is, uh, yeah, Come something on. we've got in common. One of the things. <laughs> So in January, which is also the same time that I started the project, so it was, again, like a, re a really natural alignment for the work to discuss my journey with endometriosis and the menopause. So in January, I started um, my medically induced menopause, which, if you didn't know, doesn't track exactly like um, a, a normal experience of menopause does, um, because it just happens all at once you don't get a kind of perimenal perimenopausal state it just hits you like a train um and so while I was making this work I was dealing with this like entirely new 
experience that I was not really prepared for and that no one in my life talked about. Um, and something that I found really interesting about the work is that it's prompted conversations like, um, you know, some of the older women in my family, it's kind of, it was unthinkable for them to have a conversation about how, just, just experiencing the menopause, like never mind the, the actual challenges that come with it and, you know, adapting to all the craziness happening with your body, just acknowledging it was unthinkable. Um, and I think because I'm 26, that was a whole other experience because a lot of my, um, like, friends my age they're having babies or getting married or going through the second puberty um that no one also told me about and like no, we're sorely lacking in resources and support for menopausal women but we have no like there's nothing out there for the 26 year old who is going through a menopause, mm -hmm. menopause. the conversation is so much harder to access and um yeah, I don't look like someone who is menopausal. I don't look like someone who is chronically ill and all of that kind of, um, yeah, feeds into the, the awkwardness that other people have set up. And so having frank conversations about that mm -hmm. and kind of channeling that and mm -hmm. yeah, having open dialogue with you has been so helpful and like mm -hmm. healing. Same, and I've learned so much. I've learned so much working with you about, you know, living with a, chronic I mean, illness, yeah. I've got chronic illness myself, but, and I know how going through, through that and living with that has defined the way I look at the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, oh. So I'd like to open the conversation out to Charlie and, um, how did you find last night, Delphi, firstly, and Charlie, tell us about your interactions with the work and where it started also. For you, Delphi, it what was... Just amazing to, to see someone kind of, someone else like realise the space and the way that the installation and the, the body kind of activated when Charlie was in it in a completely new way. And that was so wonderful to see kind of a glimpse of it through through Charlie's perspective, through, you know, a different body that is chronically ill. Um, and kind of welcoming Charlie into my body has made me feel extremely close to her. Mm -hmm. um, and like watching the performance was so beautiful and raw and really like the connection and, and that bringing life to that space in a very different way was really exciting for me to see. Um, again, to, you know, to work with another person who is um, chronically ill and like, there's kind of always a bit of shared experience, even though disability is this huge spectrum and, you know, no two people with the same condition or, or injury are the same, but there is that like shared kind of moment. And it, yeah, it was just really, really, really lovely to, to work with you so just introduce you to Charlie Lockwood who um, has worked at MADE over the summer as part of our Hot House graduate um, residency. Um, I saw Charlie's graduation show from photography um, USW at Bay Arts and was blown away by um, Charlie's piece and presence working with the body um, Buto and Charlie can tell us a bit more about that. But uh, Charlie came in to the hot house and um, for over a month developed a work in response to the space and body tells us more about that. And it just felt like a natural sort of had yeah. to happen. <laughs> so we invited Charlie in to, to make some work um, in relation to Delphi's piece and well work and um, spent four four days here, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Developing the piece, yeah. kind of living in the body. Yeah, 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 inhabiting it, and I just, um, you know, try kind of swallowing the, the wonder of it all. Really, I mean, I, it, 
not knowing too much about Delphi's conditions, um, it was kind of like, kind of like a blessing in some way because it it kind of fitted in with you know my my when I you know I kind of work around Buto, which is a um, it's a Japanese art form that kind of um, really highlights the the humanity between life and death. So it incorporates and takes on a lot of kind of othering of historic kind of characters um, of people who are yeah chronically ill. I mean, it came from J Japan, and it was the there's a kind of um, methodology in it um, about the poisoning in the mercury poisoning in the water, and that's why. Japanese Buto dancers have a very different frame when they're moving and dancing. So there's a lot to do with um, sick, sickness and illness in the Buto anyway. Um, and yeah, I kind of saw Delphi's um, internal landscape as a very space orientated kind of vision, um, which kind of fits in with my practice of where it's at now, really, because I'm kind of looking at, my, well, my concerns are around um, the body and technology. Um, and I myself am type 1 diabetic, so my life, again, relies on technology to keep me alive and to keep me going. Um, so I kind of formed these, um, these kind of, this imaginary landscape um, and just yeah inhabited the space put my body um under delphi's <laughs> fantastic way the opening moment of the performance yeah. i was <laughs> under here and it was literally that second that i was like I'm not <laughs> yeah that was that would have been like the show blown if i hadn't done that first of all <laughs> Yeah, so that was, um, I was going to come back to it, but I thought, oh no, you're enjoying this too much now under that wig, you need to get out of it. Um, but yeah, and every texture, I mean, the the latex, um, you know, the the light, um, I'm, I'm not sure if anybody else has had the experience, but like when I was in here, I, it's almost like it looks like it's moving. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I kind of put that into my body. I put, um, you know, the textures of, you know, the softness of the, you know, the soft fabric that you've used um, and then kind of um, created this tension with a lot of kind of um, electronic kind of movements that um, I feel, I suppose, come from a place um from from my my experience and my with my illness but also from um a very kind of chaotic history as well um to do with limited space and how the body is kind of forced um into this kind of linear kind of structure um and yeah it was it was it was it was sensational to spend time in here and just um again feel close close to Delphi, not the fact that I actually have to know anything about um, Delphi's condition, although I would, you know, really would like to know a bit more. Um, but I really felt that that presence um, and that kind of stepping outside, because when, I, when I'm moving, I am stepping outside myself, not inherently um, kind of expressing anything. I'm absorbing things through my skin, um, as well as kind of initiating um, certain points, you know, structure around around the installation. But yeah, it's it's just yeah, it's it's felt yeah, it's, it's just felt absolutely extraordinary. The performance last night was um, yeah, it was really dynamic, and mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. It was quite huge. So, yeah. yeah, and there were moments. So Charlie had a projection of some light waves. So there were moments where Charlie's body took on, became almost part of this, like sculpturally, mm. when um, became, you became another form, sort of moving in and out. And there was, it was like you were sort of globular and, um, you know, yeah. this thing, these sort so, of nascent forms. Yeah, I mean, the light, you know, 
I mean, light affects our bodies anyway, you know, it's part of the kind of field, the electromagnetic field. So that also obviously had some kind of influence on my body, whether I was conscious of it or not. Um, and the sound, again, was um, produced by um, John, who's a sound artist, um, a very short note for us, which is, I'm so grateful for. And yeah, he, it was electronic sound as well, that kind of, um, yeah, rhythmically kind of deviated from quite slow pace to, you know, quite a high intensity, which is usually what, you know, I work around intensity. So, um, all together, it was, it was just within the, the, the time frame that I had. It was incredible. Yeah. And also like, you know, there was a moment when, so these lines of light that they look like waveforms. So it, it just brought, again, it, there was a moment where it all kind of came together and your body, the sound, the lights, mm. just, it was, but yeah, yeah. we just think about a medical, you know, this mapping of energy, you know, yeah. heartbeat. I, that just came into my yeah. mind then. I, yeah, hadn't, yeah, yeah. I hadn't really registered that until. Yeah. I think something that really stood out to me was like, you have such an impressive control of your body. Um, and like, I think for me, maybe that like interest was kind of heightened by like the duality that you have when you're chronically ill because there's so much stuff about your body that you can't control. Yeah. And it's so frustrating. And I think that like really added something to your performance for me at least anyway. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's interesting actually. Cool. Um yeah, that you say that, that kind of duality of of control. Um, and monitoring, we were and talking monitoring. about that, weren't we? Yeah, the exhaustion, yeah. mm. the exhaustion that comes with self-monitoring yeah. chronically. Yeah, you know, that, that's a, a level that's always going on. You yeah. monitor yourself, like, some level. Yeah, just yeah. this constant thing that never goes away. Um, mm. That you kind of always have to be yeah. aware of, and like how that's that's tiring in a very specific way. Mm. <laughs> Especially, I mean, it's not the case for me, but especially like if you're diabetic and it's like a life threatening or if you have an adrenal insufficiency, um, yeah, like that's just knackering on, on like a really basic level that just never ever stops. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that's really. Yeah. Yeah. I have a chronic thyroid condition and it's interesting because Charlie's got a tattoo that is a butterfly on your, well, moth butterfly on your neck. And the thyroid is the same shape. Mm. So. And I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like when I saw it, it was like, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's all about balance as well. Yeah. But it's just been, what I've loved about the radicalness of this show is the way it's both welcoming, dealing with some really big, an intimate history yeah. and living with that. And yet you can go into an art space and feel welcomed by that. Um, and that's, I think that's kind of radical. That's kind of the, the goal, right? Like yeah. That the space is something that people can find comforting somehow. Yeah. Um, Softly. Yeah, yeah, literally. And it is very domestic like for me textiles have a very domestic homely connotation mm. um yeah and making kind of just i mean my my earliest conceptualization of this was that i wanted to make a soft padded cave mm. and that it would be like a, a restful healing spot not everyone experiences it that way yeah. which i find like fascinating mm. um yeah. Because I know that some people have felt unnerved or disturbed by the work. Some people kind of feel awkward and apprehensive about entering or engaging with it. Um, even the heartbeat, um, like I find it soothing. Um, and some people do, but other people find it really creepy. Mm -hmm. Other people like hate it and they, they don't want to, you know, hear it. And it I love that it stimulates these different responses. Mm. Yeah. We, does anyone have any questions for Belfi about the work or uh, observations you'd like to share? Yeah. 
That's great. Um, I think it's really interesting seeing, I mean, coming from my perspective as someone with um, multiple chronic health conditions and also as a medical engineer, um, I've dealt a lot with doctors. <laughs> and I think when you have multiple diagnoses, um, they're often very com compartmentalised from each other. And they say, like, you have one appointment for one thing, one appointment for another thing, and they talk to you about these things. And someone with comorbidities is kind of seen as, it's an extra complication, right? Or, like, something that they might have to think about extra. But it's, there's very little, like, curiosity in how these things interplay in the body. And I think, I know you created a lot of these panels separately, and then I was kind of wondering how it felt to bring them all together and see how they... It was really nice to, because the plan had always been like make these isolated elements that can be forged together in whatever way is necessary. So actually seeing everything come together and be bound, you know, how I had it in my head, like on an artistic level, it was really nice to see that manifest, but it was also kind of, um, I don't know, like almost healing to literally bind these these aspects of my life together and um yeah but for me my experience of various chronic illnesses has shaped my life to such a huge extent and has shaped my personality um to such a huge extent that it was like really healing and really satisfying like being able to tie everything together and, and literally be like, look, this is all one big ball of, of me. <laughs> um, yeah, it was really wonderful to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Literally stitching it and writing it and seeing it all at the same time. Yeah. And, you know, just like on a logistical level, I was, of course, apprehensive about like, would it be enough in the space? And, you know, would it actually <laughs> look how I had pictured it in my head um, for so long? But, yeah. Now you're you're going to move to a new phase of working now, aren't you, with your PhD? Do you want to tell yeah. us a bit about that? Um, so in January, I'd be starting my PhD. So I am researching... Um, let me get the working title, what is it? It is the history and development of domestic arts in queer and disabled activism from the 1970s till now. Um, so I'm going to be looking at banner making, quilt making, and um, like even clothes and like everything that has been used as a form of protest um, that comes from this idea of like domesticity or what has been largely categorized as women's work, um, which coincidentally has had like a huge role in activism. And I can't possibly think why that might be. But like all of this textile stuff has been used by marginalized communities for a really long time. So I'm gonna be researching that. And I'm really excited about that and what that will entail for my practice on a, a practical level um yeah so that starts in january at the university of swansea and i'll be working with the national library and the national museum to go through their archives and have a look at some of the, the work that's been preserved really exciting and i should also say that part of the elements of this piece will be included in a show called Deserters that I'm kind of hosting, co-curating up at the University of South Wales um, Oriola Bont Gallery in Forest, and that's a group show with actually three three other artist curators who have gained funding from the Arts Council to commission um, and show existing work by twelve chronically ill artists. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a mixture of art forms. Um, that's, that's happening next year from April to November at Oil Bont. There will be a series of symposia and all sorts of, you know, the idea is to bridge the medical world and with the, you know, education of art as a medium to 
really tell what it's like to to be in a body that is deserted from the upright. That's where the phrase comes from. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and yeah, and Charlie's performance of is going to be put online on our YouTube channel mm -hmm. <laughs> and the website will have a link to it. Instagram and, will have a Instagram. little clip of it, not the full thing. Oh. But yeah. Um, then the final weekend of the show, we've got Lauren Hepburn, who um, is living in London, has just completed her own um, start. Just started it. Still, still, still working on the MFA. on the MFA, is it? In uh, the place in dance and film. But again, Dealing with, we don't know what their responses are going to be, do we? we I'm well, a little bit. Um, yeah. There will be more projection and uh, possibility of some spoken word and kind of hand puppetry. It's going to be very fun. Um, yeah. I'm seeing a little bit of Lauren kind of testing and, and working within the space. So I think it'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much for.